Hey guys, this is part two of the CGY 760 setup. This carries on from part one of the transmitter setup. At this stage, I'll assume you have your 760 mounted, all connected and also bound up. When connecting our servos, it's important to not power the P-Box or the RPM slot, and your aileron and pitch servo can plug into either of the two slots. I tend to do it to whichever is the easier way to wire, because we can sort the directions out through the setup. So we have the GPP-1 program box connected to the P-Box slot of our 760. We can power them on. This will be the opening screen that we first see. To enter the 760, we hold the enter key. And this will be our home screen menu that we'll work from. On our home screen menu, we'll see some basic information about the 760 our current swash type and condition, receiver voltage, our maximum achieved rates on aileron and elevator, our maximum recorded RPM from the governor, our runtime, and also our, our gyro rates, which are fed off the transmitter, and I'll adjust one here so you can see. This can be used through setup and also tuning of the model. So the way that I've found is the best for me to set up is to start with the S-Bus Basic and the Governor for the telemetry setup. So to enter our basic menu is to hold the plus key. This will be our basic options. To now to navigate around the pages we have our up and down. To enter into the menu be enter. To go through the multiple pages we can hit the page key. Or you can scroll through each option. And to go back we highlight our top menu and hit enter. Once again, we're brought back to the home screen. Another way we can quickly go back to the home screen is by holding the escape key. That'll take us directly back to the home screen. I like to start with the FBUS basic menu to assign our condition switching. As I run three different conditions, I like to set up the model in each condition through the setup and also the governor for our telemetry. If you choose not to use these two functions, then you can skip forward this section. We get started in our basic setup. So we end basic menu to the S bus. This is our default. On page two, we'll find our conditions. In our previous video, we set channel 12 to conditions, so we'll go ahead and do that now. That's channel 12. This will now correspond with the previous video. Having set the three different AFRs, we'll have three different conditions. Now to Governor Basic, we'll choose to have it inhibited if we want telemetry only. Go ahead and enter the gear ratio, which I've already done. I've under the pole count. On page six, we want RPM out from inhibit to active and also would like to leave it in to end. Back to the home menu. Now on this menu, you can see condition one. It's now assigned to have it all working, but obviously still everything is far from being correct. So we'll go ahead with our swash basic setup. So we're into the swash basic. Your setup style options are through F3C and 3D. F3C has some unique presets as well as the aileron and elevator gains on separate channels, but 3D works in most cases. The gyro set direction is purely which orientation is mounted. For me, is number one, uh, but more information about your direction can be found on page 18 and 19 of the manual. The servo type this is where we set our operating frequency from digital 285 and also all the way through to digital in 760, and also analog, but for me, I'm running 285. The swash type is where we set if you're running 140, uh, four servos, but in my case, is a H3120. Servo direction is where we make our sticks match, is basically changing the combination of servo directions. So at the moment, we need number one, we can, I'll move the pitch tip, we can see that this is not working. Number two is not working. Number three, now we have pitch is reversed, so is aileron. 
the elevator is correct. Now we could use this one, but we can change this on page three later on down the track, but see if we can get anything closer. So number six, I've got pitch is correct, aileron is correct, but the elevator is reversed, and we can fix that on page three. So on page two, we have our swash aileron elevator and pitch servo neutral points where we can adjust our trim to make our swash level. Now if you're running a Fataba S bus servo, I would recommend doing this within the servo and leaving no trim in the 760. In this case I'm running just a standard digital servo with no S bus available so I'll need to go ahead and set the trim, I'll do that now, by adjusting it positive and negative to you swash the level of swash. So now I'm going ahead and level the swash. I've obviously done this by eye, but um, for the sake of video, but later on I'll obviously do this probably. Now on page three, this is where we can reverse our aileron, elevator, and pitch directions than previously mentioned. Now, at the moment we have pitch going the correct way, aileron is going the correct way, but elevator is reversed. If I go forward stick, I've got back elevator. So we can go down here to swash direction elevator and we'll change this positive to a minus. And now when I go forward elevator, you can see we have back, forward. Now if you have other options, you can obviously reverse this. Swash rate, this is uh, setting the, uh, the known cyclic control for the model. Now on page 48, it has a good recommendation in starting point. So this is a 380 size heli. And the recommendation for that is starting at about six degrees. We can adjust this in each condition. Now to start with, I would make this the same through each mode. So in one, two, and three. So I would need to put a pitch gauge on the blade grip and I would go up or down at full roll um, to give me six degrees. And I'll do that across all conditions. Now the pitch rate, same, we can change this again in condition one, two, three, and four, whatever we're running. Uh, again, start, if you like, at the same through all conditions. If you change it in C1 and go to uh, 55, you also need to change it in C2. It, it won't transfer. So yeah, we'll go ahead, pitch gauge, and set our overall pitch using the pitch rate. Our swash ring, again, we can adjust that on each condition. One, two, three, all the way to five. And again, you'll need to adjust that in each condition. Our uh, aileron swash direction at the moment. If we, our gyros are going the incorrect way in both aileron and elevator, so I need to change that to reverse. That's now going the correct way. Now stick direction for both aileron and elevator. I like to go mid stick for this. Seven monitor. We're going to go highlight it. I'm going to go to full right stick and hold enter. And same again on the elevator, which is back. I'm going to hold back and enter. Obviously, mode one, um, like, it's the same in all modes. Pitch high, we select enter. High position, enter. Zero, back to the middle again, I like to use the uh, server monitor there. So zero. And pitch low, zero. Need enter. So that's the uh, Swash Basic setup. We'll continue on to the next one. So moving on from Swash Basic, we'll move into Rail Basic. First option here is uh, servo type. Available is 1520, 760 or analog. In my case, I'm running a 1520. The gyro direction, before I like to set that, I like to make sure it's operating correctly off my transmitter. So if I go left rudder, uh, so off my transmitter is correct at the moment. If not, you can reverse it in the transmitter. The gyro direction is purely the sensing direction. So now we can check that, which in my case is reversed. So I'll go ahead and reverse this, check it again. 
Now our centre direction is okay. We have a survey limit for left and right, and the little arrow indicates in which direction we are. So we are now in left. We can adjust the up and down limit for our maximum throws. And same again to the right. We can adjust our numbers up and down for our, our overall limits without binding. On page two, we have our work mode. Um, I leave this on default CMT, which means I can, through the transmitter, select between heading hold and rate mode. And gyro gain A and N, I leave that on those default. So moving on from rudder basic, we'll finalize in flight tuning. Um, I would note that the, uh, the model will be able to be flown in the default flight tune parameters, uh, but we'll go through and show you what we have to adjust. So first we have our base gain. Now, if you're running a transmitter where you're unable to run the aileron and elevator gain through the transmitter, um, we can adjust the overall gain here. In our case, we're running the transmitter as the gain, so we leave this at 100. This will mean whatever gain we have in the transmitter will directly correspond to what we are displayed on the home screen. Next, we have our cyclic rates. Now, this is adjustable through each condition, see one to five, and this is in degrees per second. The default is 300, and this is how fast the model will roll and flip and we can obviously adjust it uh, up and down. On page two, again, this is all adjustable through each condition, but we have our aileron and elevator control authority. 40 is the default and is a good starting point. If uh, the number is, if it's too high, the model will accelerate very quickly to our desired flip rate and not feel very linear. And if it's too low, the model will be very slow to get to its final uh, speed. So at 40 is a good starting point. Next we have our expo, default is our negative 20. Now if you ran say negative 10 in the transmitter, your overall exponential will be negative 30. Next we here we have our flight style, and again, adjustable through each condition. 50 is the default, and is a good starting point. The higher this number, the more robotic the model will feel, a bit more snappy, a bit more locked into the maneuver. The lower this number becomes um, a bit more linear and less locked in potentially more fluid the model will feel. So that's a personal preference. I tend to run about 35. So on page three, we have our elevator pre-comp. Now this keeps the model staying flat through collective movements. So if we see the model is uh, pitching up or pitching down through elevator uh, pitch only, we can adjust this number to flatten it out. We also have our high pitch authority, which as we're running through our high pitch ranges, the model will become less reactive. So we can adjust this number to make the, the the helicopter feel more linear through its complete pitch range. And again, zero is a default and is a good starting point. So that completes the CGY 760 setup. We've covered the swash basic, rudder basic, and also some of the flight tuning parameters. At this stage, providing all of your cyclics, your rudder and all your gyro directions are going the right way, you can now set up your speed controller and your model will be ready to fly. I would recommend trying to get a few flights on this setup in default before making adjustments and remember that the manual will always have the default settings so you know where to start. If you take the GPP-1 controller with you to the field, you'll be able to make all your necessarily flight tuning adjustments. Hope that was some help.